It be in 335. I call the Wareham Housing Authority regular meeting of April 24th at Avalon Village to order. Could I ask everyone to rise, turn off their electronic devices? Who had to turn this thing off? This pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, roll call. Bob Powell, Gene Connaughton. Gene Connaughton. Bill Lockwood. Bill Lockwood, all present. Uh, on vacation is Donna Bronk and Melinda Martin is still in Florida. Um, so there's no residents. So before we go into old business, if it's all right, I'd like to thank the town officials and the town meeting members for their participation at the town meeting, and in particular for passing the article to put four new additional affordable housing units under the management of the Wareham Housing Authority, known as the Wareham Community Preservation Affordable Housing in Wareham. Have we voted on that? Yes. It passed, too. That's a whole hell of a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. That's why they say it was confusing. It wasn't, wasn't proper. Yeah, we call it. Anyway, do you want us to talk about the town meeting also now, or we want to wait? I can wait till other business. All right. Because okay. I think we're going to have a, need to have a little discussion about okay. it. Okay. I keep, I keep <clears throat> losing my pens. You don't have a second. Oh, Bill has two. Never mind, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. Well, make sure you get this back. Or you want me to take that one? Um, I got this one for free. I paid for that one. Okay, you take that one. <laughs> All right, so first order of business is to review and approve the regular meeting minutes of February 20th, 2019, which we received by email. Yes, sir. And I think we were all there for that meeting. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, motion to accept. Motion by Bill Lockwood. I'll do I have a second? Second question. by Jean Connaughton. Hey, hey how are it, you today? Any further Hi there. discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I'd like to recognize the new member of the board of selectman who did an excellent job even Great though he's a rookie and is, is not qualified to be there yet you gotta wait three more years like the finance <laughs> I, I thought it was eight years eight years okay not until so nine years so it'll it'll take worth, you, any, worth anything apparently it'll take you <laughs> it'll take you ten years to before you can become chairman because then by then they probably vote you well <laughs> anyway they say they rotate but I think I go one two skip one two skip yeah yeah, yeah. You know what? I, I, I do have one question. I don't know if anybody can answer it. I always thought the selectman was the one that stood up and presented the on behalf of the selectman. They switched as, as far as the vote is concerned. It's but when there were comments, it's usually comment. the chairman. Yeah. But Topiano didn't get up, and he's no. the chairman. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Teitelbaum made all the comments. It seems like they deferred to the FinCom to make the motion on the attic. That's what they did. Yeah. Technically, under the law, the FinCom, it's their budget, it's their budget so they, but not, the, opponent, not the whole warrant. Then it's the proponent of the article who yeah. gets up and speaks to it. Yeah. In Title Bomb, Mr. Title Bomb was a proponent of a few of them. I yeah. see. Oh, okay. And then sometimes the town administrator speaks on yes. it. But it just seemed that I thought I recalled in past years <clears throat> the chairman being the one who stood up and Disgusting. It's only a hard and fast rule if they want to apply it to you. <laughs> anyway, great job. Thank you. Good Perfect. job. Yeah, you were yeah, you were yeah, breath of fresh yeah. air. You're welcome. Breath of fresh air. Yeah. So don't don't they give up. Thank you. And they realize so they do, uh, you want us you want us to have some comments before we start? No, go no, go ahead. Sure. I just want okay. to say hello. And yeah. See what's going on so you're welcome here, and we appreciate it. But you know, I don't know if you're on the record, but. So we'll make a note that... That's Bob White. He, that's Bob. he uh, does a, a video of our you know, meetings. Bob, so make a record that, that besides us, there's a 
town administrator is here, Bob White from the community television, and yourself. Okay, so we we voted on the minutes of the previous meeting. Okay, now authorization to sign checks and documents that have adequate supporting documentation and appropriate so approval by the administrator. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Three, zero, zero. Next order of business is the administrative report, which is attached. <clears throat> this is a March and April report. Um, two vacancies carried forwarded, forwarded. Then we had a Redwood vacancy. We, we rented two in one, so it was zero for one day. May 1st, uh, a tenant passed away in the middle of, of April. They are um, paid through the 30th. The family's already removed all the belongings, so that as 5-1, A-11 will be available. B-11 is in a reasonable accommodation transfer to, to a different unit, so that will become available on 5-18. So although we have zero at the end of 4-30, May, May 31st, we'll have two vacancies. Um, so in this particular uh, report, I put in, um, for your overview, the new CHAMP waitlist number. Okay. So this number is going to be a little bit different than the numbers that we have. We I'm have the surprised. applications here on file. There has probably been about 33 people, because I looked like a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, and there was 405 applicants, 125 emergencies on the CHAMP program only, not the MRVP emergencies. So now there's 438, and I did not put in those 33. So you see people can go in, they can attach their, uh, they can attach their application to our housing authority. We do not have a hard copy of that. That is just people using the web to go in, put it, the application on the central waiting list, and attach it to us, and many others too. So I wanted you to see how it comes. It comes in as elderly, non-elderly. They don't differentiate right now. I mean, I do, I'm learning the new reporting systems. So it just says, you know, 175 elderly, 263 non-elderly for a total of 438. And is then I have my numbers. These are the applications that we have on file yeah. here. So that's why there's going to be a discrepancy. They won't equal. You said 263 non-elderly, but here it says handicap. So. Well, that's that handicap. It's uh, just a slash. It, it, we we call them non. It's non-elderly handicapped. So they they've dropped the non-elderly and they put handicapped because that's. Anybody under the age of 59 and below, 16 and above is what is considered elderly in the state. Doesn't matter if you're handicapped or not. If you're 60 and above, you're always classified as elderly. elderly. Okay. So 59 and below is, and all of the other paperwork is non-elderly handicapped because okay. it's. So but, if it, if you're non-elderly but not handicapped, we can, you're, you're we, still on the list. Well, is it a separate list of the handicapped person? Have a I would put them on the MRVP mobile list because so technically they're not eligible for they're the not money. eligible yeah. for the program. Okay, so, so where do veterans fall in this? Uh, well, the vet the veterans are on here. There are there are some veterans. They're, they're on either here. one of those or the other. Either one of those or the other. Yeah, um, it's they don't differentiate on the list. You can go in and you can they check off and you can pull a veteran status list and. Okay. Stuff like that, yeah. But so, they, but they fall into one of those other so two this, categories. So this online application. Yep. When do you get to look at the application? When you pick somebody who's exactly, gonna, so who might be the next person coming right. in, then you look. So at the, the very bottom below, which I didn't give you this part, it says view a pulled list. So if I was looking for a unit, of which. We will be looking for somebody very shortly. So I will go in and what is called a pull unit, and we pull down basically priority one. It, it'll be all emergencies. We we need someone. Um, we we do not need a non elderly because we've 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 already we're at we're at thirteen point we're at like sixteen percent for non elderly. So I have to wait for that to come down a little so bit. So that's more. we got to. So I just would go in and say I need a list for elderly, veteran. You know I know the veterans will come up first. The so there's a percentage. There's a, a, a there is a percentage for the amount of people to be handicapped. It's thirteen point five percent, twenty percent for veterans, thirteen point five for handicapped, in, in non-elderly handicapped. Where is that stated? Who determined it? And That's how? stated in seven sixty code 
Code of Massachusetts seven, Regulations, six, seven sixty six, seven, and eight. Yeah. It's so in it's there. a regulation, it's not a notice, a, a guidance, or an advice. Correct, it's, it's an actual regulation okay. in Code of Massachusetts regulations. Okay. So, so when, when people come and they're, they're frustrated, they don't think we're hearing them, that we don't understand, you know, everybody, we all have our own stories in our own lives. We all have our own stories. So when they come in and they don't understand that XYZ just showed up six months ago and they're an emergency case start status priority one elderly and they may be an emergency case priority one non-elderly i'm i can't take that non-elderly because i'm at my capacity i'm over my capacity so i would fill it with a non-elderly and there's a reason why there's a balance because i mean it's not hard for us to understand that if you're 42 if you're 36 years old and your, elder, your handicap is not physical, it may be emotional, and you like to listen to music, and we have this problem here, at 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, and you want to listen to loud music, and your neighbor is 80, and she wants to go to bed at 7 or 8 when the sun goes down in the winter time. It, it's hard. It becomes a conflict. So the state put in a natural percentage to say, we don't want you to go above that percentage for anybody under the age of 60, because as you age into this ages you get you slow down yeah so that's so uh, and my next question is so you have this quote priority one two three four yeah so who decided they fit into priority one two three or four when they apply there somebody looks at their application and puts it yes. in this category they, they actually um and who are those people the, the that's again that's in the code of massachusetts regulation the priorities one two three four I, and I five that. six seven but when i apply right and when I you say apply I'm you say to me one. hi i'm a veteran i mean excuse no me, when i put my name right. in that list right how um, does it get on priority one because priority one um hi we had a let me just use priority one as an example we had a uh, downdraft that came through and the national weather service identified it in three people lost the roofs on their home mm. you're 82 you live on a very fixed income your roof cannot be fixed it's cdbg you're out of the realm you're in a high income area so you're not in the slum i hear all that but let me just let me just tell you yeah. so you come to me with your application yeah and you come with the weather report mm -hmm. and well when you come to the top you come with a weather report you come with a, uh, ex I, I can't live, the Board of Health just came to my house and told me that I can no longer live there. So that was caused by an, uncon that was caused by a priority one status. There's a whole... Let me try to keep it simple. I okay. hear all of that stuff. Right. I have all the conditions that qualify. I'm Bob Paulatis. I go into the system and say, I, I was, I was on the victim of the storm, the hurricane, I got no food, I got no roof, I got right. this and I put my name in this block, this group, yep. what allows me to stay in that category? Until you're proven you're not. So, so when you, you come will to pick me as this house, name out. What happens you, was you, I... Let me finish, yeah, please. Yeah. You pick this name out, and now you have the burden of determining if they're qualified, eligible to be in that category. So DHCD created this system yep. that doesn't help anybody. No, it, it mean it, it works because you can, The other I, system worked too. Well, it's the same exact system. Yeah, it's the same right? system, except but, it's all bogged down with technology and right. DACD. Well, but what happens is when I go in and I first put my initial application in, now you don't need to prov provide that until we pull a list. I pull a list, I write you a letter, and I say, please provide all of your documentation that would make you a priority one status as you picked yeah. on your application. So, so you, you come list in. all that stuff? Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> we vet them out and make sure. No, 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 no. Do you list what they need to bring yep. so that they say, yep. oh, I came and I brought this, but you didn't tell me I needed that? No, it doesn't work that way. I'm asking you. That's what no. I'm trying to determine. When, I, when a person comes in and they, they're, they're not a standard applicant or, you know, uh, they have to bring in all of the proper documentation so that if anyone board members, state, or any person that comes through the door can take a look and say due diligence according to the law and regulation was done and this person is qualified for that status. Here's my, here's my, my next question. Is, right. So, they come in, they have eight out of the ten items they need, and do you say, you sorry you don't have it, 
gone, we take the next person? Or do you start back and forth, get me this, get me that, well, I oh, I can't get it, I can't right. find no, it? Uh, no, we, they a, have only seven days to produce right. the so documents. Now, that's, okay. I don't okay, care sorry. about the details. Okay, I didn't know I'm what you were asking. I'm about the process. Yeah, the of, process is seven. They, we, we give them a letter. We have ten days okay. to respond. If you don't respond, it's, it, it, then, and then, then we give them another seven. Another so seven it's two days. weeks. Then what? That's it. When are they gone? Get right then and there. All right. Because we got. We have people. a lot of people on the list. And That's what I mean. Time is money for us. So we now so you took somebody that, you took that next person on the list. Yep. My next question is, how do you know that they're more qualified than the second, third, or fourth person on the list? It's only a, the the date is the date. See, I, I'm I'm looking for loopholes. Well, and there problems. is there is. So there's a I lot. I want to tell you. It's not simple. Right. It is not simple. And I want to be sure that right. that the person that gets in there wasn't not just vetted and right. had the right paper. Right. Does they be do they belong? Were they a priority ahead of other people that had a priority? Right. And when it's a why can't we look at all those ten pr priorities and say we decide that this one here, number seven, is right. more of a priority than number two. Right. I again um, we're brand new into this new system, mm -hmm. the old system. I would have already had that information immediately. Mm. I would have requested it right away because I don't want to put them on a priority one list no. if they're not priority one. Right. It's a lot of work. It shouldn't be there. Right. So now they make us to do it afterwards. Yeah, so so I haven't worked it enough. So I'm not challenging you. No, I understand. I'm challenging the system. It is a to system. It, it, there's been, because when you pull a list, they want you to pro pull. I mean, and again, we're not a big housing authority. So I said, this is not, doesn't make any sense for us to pull 25 people. And vet the first ten. I got one unit, and I mean, as you see, we're, we're getting one or two units available. Or, I mean, my MRVP. I've only had one turnover in sixteen months. That's a huge amount of. I mean, not the MRVP, the project-based MRVP, not the mobile. It's one unit in sixteen months. This has never happened in the five years that I've been here. So doesn't matter if you're one or ten. You're not moving because I don't have anything to offer you. So it's hard to. But now this new list, they want us to vet out the first 10 or 15 people. I'm like, We're, I'm a one-person shop. Mm. That's a lot of work. That's what and, I'm saying. And you may have three people that show up right away. Number five on the list may show up before number one. How do, I, how do we do How is so, that okay? So, so how did DHCD make this better? I, you know, They, well, they I, got I control don't. of it. They made it up in there. They electro, electrified right. it. I, it's I five understand. years late in the making. Right. And it's, it and it's a mess. So, I guess I have one And question. they are giving us waivers for those things. Yeah, so we, and where do they get the right to give a waiver and we can't give a right? See, this yeah. is where I, I get fed up with DHCD I understand. making the rules. Yep. That As none of this along. stuff is it. Now we've diverted off the, the uh, CMR 4752, and now they're down in here and they say, well, Jackie, it's all right, give them a waiver. Yeah. Now take the next one and. They, there's no right. documentation of all this stuff on the right. phone with these clowns. It's, 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 That's why my position is, don't pick up the phone and call them. Do what you think is right, right. and you work for us. Right. You don't work for them. Remember right. that. Right. No, no. You work I for the board. I don't forget. So that. don't tell. Take the call. If the phone rings, don't answer it. Right. And this is, <laughs> it's actually a common thing now. The last meeting I went to with my colleagues, they were like, I answered my board. I don't answer. Yeah. They signed my paycheck, and I'm like, you're right. So, yeah, and these 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 you want to do in, the right thing. In, incompetent, unqualified people right, but at we're DHCD not a deli line. that it's are not political a deli appointments line. don't know what they're doing. Right. It's it, I, you want to do the right thing, but at the same time, it's not a deli line. You I you think we have, don't take enough number out of take, the machine. They, they and they <laughs> want us. They have actually told us, and, and we are challenge. Their the groups are challenging their decision to give a number. Right, because so if I said to you you're 25, right, and at this point in time in that line you're 25, in six months you might be 29, because of whatever, many other reasons. So then because you then you're like, cases come in, you right? told me I was 25 and now I'm 29. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what to tell Doesn't you. Doesn't sound like a good fair system. No, so it it's, to it's be, really yeah. need that. Uh, Everybody should. I, what they should do with Mass Narrow and the housing authorities say, here's all the concerns and problems we have. Go fix it, and we'll see you in another five years. Right. Go away, because okay. all it says in the law under the new amendments to 121B is that they should develop a, 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 a an automated centralized, centralized waiting, waiting list. I mean, and it doesn't get right. into all these details. One thing it does make it easier for us is when somebody does send a paper application to us, 
and they're already in the system, somebody else, they've sent it to other housing authorities, we just go and attach us. So I don't have to enter all that work again. So in that way, I'm grateful. That's what I thought was the, the only positive thing about this. <laughs> it was saving you initially a lot yeah, of work. Yeah, and you know, it's but cool to see, run, right, you know, <laughs> it's making their job easier because all the demographics on their list, mm -hmm. so they can go in and, and they can like pull down, you know, the demographics because you put them in. Yeah, DHCD some, has right. a lot of staff that do yeah. nothing. Okay, well, so did I, go ahead. Go ahead, yeah. just a second. Yeah. In the middle of all of that, but I understand that they self declare that they're a category one or a category two or so. Well, somebody puts them they in. self declare no, no, they, with third. They in the beginning now, when you put on the when you put, when, if I'm going to apply, yeah, you go on the app, you go in, I and you fill say, out my application, right? and I just I declare that I'm a category one or a category well, five. Emergency. No, 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 no. Let me, I'm sorry. Let me, let me back okay, up. I, I okay, was hoping let me I misunderstood that. So there are, there are a series of boxes. The top box explains the, the, um, the home, the homeless or emergency, emergency case, case status, right? Yeah. And then underneath are all the priorities. But what they did was they mixed the priorities up. So now so it's not priority one, the, priority two. couldn't game the system. They're trying to, so you can't, you, you check what you box can. that fix, you you're, still can game it. You're self-declaring, you're right. checking off yeah. but, but it sounds right. like they don't know which is the priority one. They don't yeah. know which one's so the priority. So people are going to check what they want to do. I, I think I am. I'm but how long it will it take? I mean, because we deal with these very big organizations, the social work organizations, mm -hmm. that will put it together for mm -hmm. their clients mm -hmm. and will say, please press this. Please check off yeah. that. It's yeah. like the illegal alien that they tell them before, or the lawyers from here or down there saying, tell them you're abused, you're battered, yeah. you're fleeing a war-torn country, and they check it off. That's why so we that's have 100, out have. of the 438, well, it was 125, I'm sure it's more, 125 of them are emergency case statuses. Uh, emergency, yeah. Right. So that's so, that's what, because so they, after, we've, <clears> after <throat> we've put in place all the emergencies that are local preference, then we have to go to all the emergencies that are not local preference before we ever go to a resident. So it's really, really heartbreaking. Okay. So when we put in four units of CPC, that's my funded, next question. It's then, going to be and we can say different rules, different lease. Right. So we're him community residents. preservation right. housing, four units. This is the income, this is the qualifications, this is what your, your rent's going to be. Can you pay this rent? And it'll be a different lease. It won't as have to, all this malarkey. As to the extent the and law provides and allows us to do that, we will do that. No, the local preference part. Yes. The law doesn't prohibit us because it's not, doesn't right. fall within these laws. Right, it's not a law. We, it's a, establishing yeah. it under, we'll set up the conditions and the qualifications, okay. elderly, Conditions of the lease. In, yeah. in, in conditions of the lease. I think it's, if it works the way you explain it, I think it's a good thing. I think there are, there are residents in this town that need housing. Yeah. Maybe they're veterans. not destitute, but they can't afford to go out and rent an apartment. Yeah. And they could be. And why should and they, they be forced to be in retirement? Homeless. They have the Social Security. This would be the perfect yeah. opportunity. Let, for let me give you an example. Right now, on the list that we have, the physical applications that we have. It goes, you know, veterans in emergency, and then the next application was put in. And the t first application in line right now is from FY. It's from 2014. They've waited five years, and and um, I just. Is it fair for that five year person? I still to don't understand how they can justify. Walks in the door. No, it I understand, you know, that there are emergency case statuses, but from the from the governor and from the state of Massachusetts DHCD, they don't see us separately enough to say to justify that they say we've got these all these emergency case statuses that need to be placed. Place them. So let's just wave that and give me yeah, on see, that. I, get, I come back to my argument. Who are they? Right. How do they have more information as sitting on high in the McCormick building about all of these people there on emergency basis? We're at the we're at the battle lines. We should right. be making the and determination. We have, to, we have to vet them out because I'm sure not, some of them are not. Sorry, you're not. And then they can go to court, go to file lawsuits or whatever they want to do. So then um, we started out with seven uh, work orders. We've done 100 from 220 to 425, 2019, and we have 
three remaining as of this morning, and A11 is the unit turnover, and that's included in three. So um, we did complete, um, and we hired uh, Penny Almeida for the position of clerk administrative assistant. She's working out great, polite and kind to our applicants and tenants. Um, I did provide the subcommittee assignments in um, the uh, packet. We need to, uh, you know, there's just two. So I don't know if you want to continue on with these so I we can have subcommittee meetings. Yeah, we do. Like we, we, we have the Human Resource Committee, the right, so Cash Management, Budget and right. Finance Committee, right, the one. Infrastructure Capital Committee, Internal Audit and Compliance Committee, Resident Relations Committee. So we got two here. You, I'm sorry, at the very back of my packet that I gave you, the ones I, I just gave you. Um, All right, so okay, the, last, the very last end. page, yep. Yep, last um, page. Oh, or either right before the budget yeah. or right after. So the subcommittees are made up of two members and Jackie, and they meet posted meetings. Do you got it, Gene? Yeah, I don't seem to see it here. Yeah. Looks like this. Yeah. Well, just want to look at the packet Let's that see. your phone. Oh, it's, oh, okay. Maybe I. I didn't have a packet. I just had this. And here's the other. It yeah. wasn't on your desk when you yeah. came in. Unless it's. Wait a minute. Maybe it's down here. Yeah. No. No. These are mine. And I have the minutes over here. Yeah. Anyway, I can okay. share with. Um, well, let me get the one that. You, you, you got one. The wrong Not at all. Okay, one. let's go. <laughs> okay, you're, okay, let's so see. You would be a. So that's a, a two-person subcommittee. That's a one-person subcommittee. Okay, yeah, here, that's here. a two-person subcommittee. And uh, yeah, so we need we need one for okay. cash, cash management, and finance, and budget. <laughs> so you this one. Just have a meeting with yourself. You'll be all set. Okay. Um. You have to meet with Bob on that one. You know. And then the cash management, Bob's all by himself there. So he need. Do you are you going to put somebody else with these on these committees, or what are you going to? Yeah, do? we we, we need want to, two. We, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here's another another copy. For you. So just see if you're interested. We don't have to fill them now because we we got to we, we we'll be seeking a, uh, to fill vacancies anyway. But anyway, that's the that's the existing comp composition of the subcommittees, and we need to um, probably should get started on the infrastructure group, which, mm -hmm. which we have to start doing some groundwork for the new um, the new, units. The new site, right. the four units, you know, the site. Right. We'd like to call in um, Dig Safe and get um, you know uh, JC Engineering in. Whoever else around and ask them to give us a quote on quote. doing the work. And you can, re, you, if you would set up some parameters, maybe to mm -hmm. what you think they should be, be um, offering for services. This is this, uh, what do you yeah. call it? Design. Survey. Yeah. Survey the locations, mm -hmm. etc. Then we can move forward. Anyway, then when's Donna coming back from vacation? I actually, I didn't speak with her. Penny did, and she said I'm really not back yet. I think she extended it a couple of weeks. Yeah, she's um, not one that stays there through the whole winter. No, she, she doesn't. But um, she there's been some changes in her personal life, so okay. I think that she needed the extra time. Okay, yeah. good. All right, so we at least have cash management, budget, and finance, and resident relations. So. We can we can move forward with the other committees anyway. Okay. All right. I'll post okay. meetings. I'll yeah. email everybody on Monday. Yeah. For okay. the other three. Wednesday, Wednesday, Friday, mm -hmm. the twenty fourth. Do you need to post a meeting for two people? No. I well, mean, I mean, email everybody what dates and times oh, well, they should get But yeah. somebody brought that up. In, yeah. In, in the in the, the open meeting law, kind of. Indicates that even subcommittees that report back to a board should, should be post posted. Should be posted. Stuff, Got it. You know? yeah. okay. We always have posted them. So and it's, that's you mean at town hall? Yeah. 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 It's, it's some b committees. <laughs> oh, <seriously. laughs> some b committees. 
So. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Okay. I suppose it makes sense, but. Yeah, it doesn't because. Yeah, but you know, you know, you know. So it goes online anyway, so people yeah, can check it online. Yeah. So anyway, so that's. Um, what they want to come. <laughs> so I talked so, about the applicants. We, we sure. sell tickets to, to our subcommittee meeting. And again, we said thank you already. Not a lot of them. <laughs> oh yeah. We said thank you already to uh, incorrect, uh, the town meeting town members and, and town the voters, town officials, CPC committee, and a successful bid to, to provide truly affordable homes. Mm -hmm. Also in the packet is Kevin Ward. He sent in his request to be on the board, um, a, uh, a list of his qualifications. Um, it looks like. Must be at the bottom. Really, no, it I, see it. I, I didn't it's, see it. It's right after the. I looked for it earlier. Right. I didn't it's, see it's it. Right here. It's, it's right here. It's right here. Piece of paper, blank. All right. Interesting. He's a, he's a member of Telephone Pioneers. Yeah. Um, and they, 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 they New with, England Telephone. It came with Alexander Graham Bell. Yes. Right. Uh, part of that. Uh, my uh, <laughs> my great great uncle. Was he? Alexander was? No, I worked with him. Oh, okay. I worked with him. And is one of the pioneers telephone too. pioneers. Is pioneer. okay. As is my great grand yeah. okay. grandfather. Oh, wait a minute. My no, great grandfather. This is, yeah, That's because you found that. Yeah. So I put them over there out of the way. This is our numbers. That's about 100 years old as an organization. Really? Yeah. And that's part of the And he's been, yeah. apparently been there about half that time. Oh, that's well, he's in the 70s. That's okay. Yeah, so. American Legion. Oh, you have one there. Yeah. Evergreen you House. Okay. I just, mean, I guess my packet was mixed up. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, well, abbreviated pack. Get <laughs> an abbreviated one. Okay. okay. There it is, right there. Oh, somebody just brought it over. Yeah. Well, anyhow, so we have his. We should have invited them to come to but, the meeting, but yeah. we'll do that the next one. Okay. Nice. So, so you must know him from the. Yeah, he was on the. American, the, American uh, Legion and the um, he was on Veterans the Council Memorial Monument Committee. Mm -hmm. um, um, okay. Right now, the opening that we have is for is the governor appointed opening, right? Ellen Martin, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So we should vet them and recommend them or something to the maybe the selectmen will write a letter for him and we can write a letter for him, write mm -hmm. to our state rep and ask her to. Put him forward. We should find out the t to term what's left on the term, so we know how long he's got. Okay. I, I, I can find out her term. Yeah. I've got that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, then um, also the Department of Labor Standards for our maintenance uh, group. They sent a us another the raise. Huh? Yeah, minimum base rate. It went in effect April first. It's out of our control. Um, and also the Commonwealth of Mass, Plymouth County Retirement, their allocation for a pension fund. This is for fiscal year 2020. It really, did, it really increased extremely little. We we, also, we paid this year, this just under, price. just under this. For the fiscal year which begins July 1st, 2019. Correct. Right. Yeah. So, how long do we have? When would they like this money? Well, they do it two times. They split it in half. Oh, and right. what I did was I actually started paying them monthly uh -huh. because then we're not strapped with 15, 14, it'll be 14, mm -hmm. 5. We pay actually, it, actually, because it's 14, 7 this year, which makes it 19, 5. So, it went up a couple, I knew it was only a couple hundred bucks when I looked at it. That I would be nice care. if the sewer department did something like that. I think that we, if we went to the meeting and requested to be able to do that, um, because should. I think that it would be better. It, it's easier for us because we just uh, we budget it. We budget it, and yeah. it just goes out the door immediately. Okay, every month. so look into that. If we need to send a letter and yep. ask to be on the book at, at their on their agenda and request monthly because then we, a bill for the sewer. Right, we won't. You know. Oh, as opposed to. Getting hit with a big slug. Yeah. Correct. What is it, annual now, once a year? No, it's twice. It's still twice a year. So about it's 300 a pop? Uh, it's, yeah, yeah. 300 and I think three because it's 606. Oh, it's gone mm -hmm. up again. Yeah, oh yeah, it went up. It, it, yeah, we, we incurred about $3,400 more. 
for these little units with half toilets. With one small toilet, one sink, and a shower, kitchen sink, and a shower. No, 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 one person, one person, possibly two. We pay the full rate per each one. I did look at their rate structure. I did speak to um, Guy at one point to see if we could get like a rooming house uh, thing rate. rate. Um, I just think it's you know you could have a five bedroom home and you're paying the same rate as us. You could have five or six kids yeah. and you're paying the same rate as each individual unit. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess yeah. It doesn't seem it's, it's, it's a huge, it's a huge state amount state for us, but it is. Um, no. Um, And I know there are other situations like that, like laundromats, for instance, are paying paying on a per a full house rate per washing machine. And, yeah. So how does it work here? They don't have washers and dryers in their units. We have a set here for. Everybody. Well, it's really you know it, it it's really hard for me to understand you know the water rate for this the washing machines and dryers in this building is like two hundred and seventy dollars a month. I mean, uh, every so six, six months. months. So we pay a little under six hundred bucks. We pay more in sewer than we do for what we pay in water here. It's, it's I, I, a lot more. You know, I mean, we got a couple of toilets. Obviously, it costs more to get rid of it than it does to get it. Correct. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So a lot more. one has to say, you know, I mean, I I fought in this argument before. And I, I don't will know if it costs say more that I think it's I think it you know I wish we oh, would they're, not. There are actually use different taxing organizations here. Yeah, the water department is one one out there. Right. But so usually, it's, different it's based on usage, consumption, or anything right. else. Right, but we we don't have that infrastructure to be able to do that. Well, they, need, they don't they want need, it. They, they need to put a meter on. They don't want know, it. Each individual but, building, and yes, you know, they don't want it. There's communities that don't have it, but there's science out there that says if if you use a hundred gallons, thirty two of it is in Wait. the sewer system. Absolutely. They. They engineers and no, we we are a money a maker for the though. town. We I, I I just you can't put it any other way because there's no justification. You know, I mean, when you pay you when you're paying sixteen thousand a year in water cost and you're paying sixty eight thousand dollars a year in sewer costs. Yeah, you don't. You know, there's no have... like you know equal equal. You know. Oh. You and I get we have to fix pipes and we have to do this and we have to you do don't that. Usually, but, have, but you have that same with water infrastructure. Right, you but you don't usually have a separate meter for sewerage. You no. have the water meter coming in. It doesn't. Okay. But anyway, that's a dead yeah. horse. Okay, so. Um, the powers to be yeah. and ready to do it. So on 424 tonight, me and Jean are going to go to uh, Affordable Housing Trust uh, open house in Yarmouth, Yarmouth Commons. They're just newly built. And we'd like to go see and have a conversation, a beginning conversation about tax credits and how they worked with the Affordable Housing Trust and other different financing options to mm -hmm. create more affordable housing. Um, Just off the top of your head, do you know how the place was financed with what kind of money was? Financed? No, we're going to go. Find this is the flyer. Yeah. So we're gonna go find out. Right. They're going to do the tour, then learn about affordable housing trust funds. Mm -hmm. And Round then May 2nd. specifically yeah, for I existing affordable housing trust funds. So is this, this is a, very is interesting, this, especially this, as a CPC member. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a This building? So. Well, this, the whole complex is 57 okay. sandwich road. So, so it could be sure late night for me. Unit. It starts at 6. It starts at 6. So it must be close to 9 when it ends. Oh, that's what tonight. But every, every time I get to one of these, and I pull in a little more knowledge. I mean, it's a lot. People don't realize what it takes to run the housing authority. Okay, yeah, we could do that. So then on May 2nd, we're going also to Franklin Housing Authority. It's not on here for the local. We're then going to meet with real estate people and, an, and a gentleman, a housing authority director, that has really developed a lot of in Chump from Chumpsford. His name's David Hennison. Hennison. Hennison, yeah. and he really understands low, low income tax credits. And he taught a class last year, and this class is a really more intensive class. And he's the incoming president right. of the Narrow, too. He is. So we're very excited. And that's May 2nd in Franklin Housing Authority. May 8th, I'm going to calculating rent for tenants living in state public housing. And one of the reasons why I'm going back, which it's always good to have a refresher course, is that the asset problem, you know, people coming into housing authorities with assets 
are becoming more and more frequent. This used to be very infrequent. Now it's frequent, which means they sold their house, they didn't have a mortgage, they have $250,000, mm -hmm. you know, in a bank account, they're coming into public housing, their husband died, the, they sold the house, and it's more and more, you know, they're coming with more money, and there is a calculation of it, and I can't, we can't get a, it's very difficult to, I just want to make sure we're doing the right thing, always. Okay, I so do it, but. Who's, you said you were going to. Franklin, which ones of these things? Here? May 2nd is the Franklin Housing Authority. I mean, not Franklin Housing Authority. It's at Franklin Housing Authority. Which it's was put, it? I don't see May 2nd. It wasn't on here. Low income tax credits. Okay, so 5 2, five two is LITC is at Franklin Housing Authority. Franklin. But the, there's real estate agents <coughs> and David Hedison giving that talk. And that's what time? I might go with you to that. Oh, okay. Um, that it, It's. Um, I, I'll find out. Nine Let to five. It's nine to four. It's all day. Okay. Yeah. Um, five eight is calculating rent. That's going to be a Dartmouth Housing Authority. Are you talking about the one on May tenth? May May tenth is May second is the. Yeah, I, you, I thought you would yeah. move. Okay. Yeah. So who's running these programs? Calculating rent for tenants living in state aid to public housing is DHCD. Yeah. Okay. The loan income tax credit is part of Mass Now hiring the real estate guys and uh, David Hedison. That's the May 2nd. Yeah, May 10th service and assistance animals training along with abandoned property training with Pat Grace. Mm -hmm. That's our lawyer, Pat Grace. Mm -hmm. So we got the 2nd of May, April 24th, May 8th, May 10th. Yep. And now you're down to May, May 14th. May 14th is the, um, this one, um, they, Housing Solutions, which used to be formerly South Shore Housing Authority, became Housing Solutions, and now they're merging with Neighbor Works of Southern Mass. You know, um, and um, that's that they're they're having their opening announcement breakfast at Stonehill College on May fourteenth. Uh, Mass, not Man Narrow, oh, M A Narrow, Mass Narrow, annual spring conference at the Sequest in Falmouth is the twentieth and the twenty first. The twenty second is procurement training, which I'm going to take because I think we down there. Yeah, down there on so the it's Wednesday. Like the, it's the so next, it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's the final day. The twenty fourth, I'm taking the day off. Won't be in the office, which is that Friday. But you'll be out for the month before anyway at all these trips and conferences. I know, so but now I'm, you're going to take a day off. After yeah, the, I, I need a day off. Not from that stuff, you won't. Yeah, well, I, I need a day <laughs> off. That's a day off down there. <laughs> we have family coming in from out of town, and I'm okay. going away. Um, and then Just on the 6th and the 7th, 6th <laughs> and the 7th, uh, State of Mass Dwelling Unit Inspection Training done by the, uh, the, uh, commercial, uh, the commercial property people in DHCD. So why, why don't you invite the people from the Board of Health to come and see how right. they can uh, Me and Dennis together. will go to that one. Um, so I was thinking the maintenance people yeah, should Yeah, me and Dennis are going to go because... Yeah, but what about the guy at Board of Health, too? They yeah, he, he, well, no, they do the Code 2 training. They do the Code 2 inspections, which, mm -hmm. to me, I want them to be as thorough as they can because I feel like we have a couple of tenants that they allowed to let go last year. I feel like they were really borderline hoarders and I need to we need to address this and I, if I have no power firepower from the Board of Health and they say no big deal then it becomes what, our you? liability and then it's my word and the Board of Health let me go and what about the fire department looking at this stuff in the fire hazard the hoarding I, and the I, health I, hazard how can I, they, I, look they the they'll other refer way this? good question mm. okay so. Just um, and that completes the um, that portion of the administrator's report, um, and then I'll go. And then the administrator's review, but I didn't put in my review that I gave a, a while ago. So you gave us a review last month of what right. you did. I was complimentary of it, and I thought you you've progressed through the year. But do you want to? Defer that till Donna comes in. Her, her, I'm, her, I'm sorry. The, her, the oh. agenda item for her review. Remember, we did. She gave us a recap of a couple of meetings ago about her um, her administration and what she did. Number B there. Oh, number B. Yeah. Remember, she we got her review and then we said we'll take it up at the next meeting. Oh, blah, 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 yes. Blah. We'll defer it. 
Yeah. Uh, at least I'm, I'm in favor of it. That's fine. I'd recommend it too. Defer it. Mm -hmm. I think we should defer it. All right, so we'll take it up at the next okay. meeting. You could yeah. put it in the agenda, in, put, it, <coughs> put it in what you said. Yeah. And we'll, then we'll comment on it and give you the appropriate cost of living raise. <laughs> Authorized by DHCV. <laughs> they take it away. Uh, don't give them that no, option. Only, they'll, they'll remove I'm, it. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding too. But I wouldn't. Oh, but um, on that subject, yeah. um, we, what, where do we stand with the budget versus your salary versus? No, that's in. We got some letters in there for you. Yeah, read, we did. We, we did the letters right they, here. They wrote, so she right. they responded to it. Yeah. Uh, they did we call and ask if we were mm -hmm. where do we stand on that, and we had other things yeah. going on. So, so we we wrote to the undersecretary, which is Mr. Janash, and that was the one that. What is, what is this part of? Okay. Gotcha. That's the last page of my administrative. Oh, okay. Report. So Janelle Chen is the undersecretary of DHCD. Which I gotta go in there and put that up. Of uh, EEOC. Executive Office of Housing and Community Development, not EOC, but EOHC, um, CH. So when Tom Joy was here, he asked us, we should write a letter. This was the letter we wrote. Then this one, this Amy Stipe, coincidentally, the day she met with Charlie Baker, she immediately called and said, where's Bob? I need to speak to him right away. And I'm like, he's out of country. Well, I gotta, are you going to answer my email or what she sent the day before? And I was like, oh, I was waiting to get back from him before responding because, you know, I didn't want to respond out of turn because it came to Bob. So, because she said that he hasn't answered her phone calls because yeah. Bob was out but of But I left country, for vacation. So, I was right. gone. And then other things happened. Yeah, so then, so? so then this was the response to her letter. Okay, so this, this one to Amy Stitely is a response directly to Amy Stitely's letter, the one that dated March 12th. Yeah, and the, and the one yeah. to Chen is the one that, that okay, so the town accountant, I mean, the fee account suggested we write about our budget subsidy. So they were written separately, but they can go together. Okay, so these three, two will go together. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't so we haven't received a response yet. No, no because we haven't. We, well, we no, haven't no, like, sent a letter we to you write, before we. We got to write a response. Right. That's the right. response. Well, you said stately, correct? No, no, no. They yeah. haven't gone. They're, they're Is, here for. Oh, us. okay. Yeah. They're asking for, for your response. To, oh, okay. Is your review? I thought we already sent it. Yeah, I did too. No, you you didn't sign it yet. I put your names there, but we haven't. You we want everyone to sign this letter. I thought it was all cleared up, and we're moving forward. No, no, no. Oh no, it'll be it'll be a couple months before this gets I don't know when that came, but it came March twelfth. It was a while ago. I remember. Yeah, just a month ago. But that's for once. And this time they wanted a quick response because now the governor's sticking them with the about what's wrong with their implementation of the law. Right, so he, he actually met with them and said that the law, the PMR and the AUP, exactly what Bob has been saying, flawed. is flawed <laughs> and not strong enough to stop fraud, waste, and abuse vis-a-vis -vis Chelsea, Stoughton, Yarmouth, uh, North Shore, Springfield, Springfield. Chelsea, Randolph. So immediately Everett. on that day that, that she morning, met him. We went to study we're going to Yarmouth. Yeah. Yeah. Study yeah. fraud? No, 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 we're no. setting. <laughs> this is only a. <laughs> this, didn't she just say that? No, that's they, well, they, they they replaced that girl now with another one that's oh, okay. following the law. Yeah, it looks okay. good. They took her to court, and they found her what she stole, and they made her what, pay back. What, what's that? I don't know. This, this is the, the five thing for the thing we're attending huh? tonight. That's it's really about affordable housing trusts. Oh yeah, but what are you talking? What's Bill talking about? He was joking. He thought it was something else. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, she she was she was talking about. Yarmouth. Fraud in various places, one of right. which was Yarmouth. Yarmouth. And we have yeah, to be yeah, going yeah. to Yarmouth, so that's yeah. what he was. Right. Yeah. Okay. So they got their money, or they took her to court, and they found out, you know, she was paying her college to her son's tuition, daughter's wedding, 
many other things to same the credit thing, card. Same thing that happened in A1. This, 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 there's a hundred stories of that. Yeah, there is a lot. And there's another hundred that they haven't detected yet. Right. So, <laughs> well, what happened here years ago? Yeah, right. It swept under the rug. Yeah. So. Under the rug. Anyway. Review, we, and then we want, we would like. As part of your thing, do you want to go over the, oh, the accounts tenants' accounts receivable yeah, list? Yeah. How's that coming along? Repayment, repayment, repayment. Yeah, they're all in repayment agreements. And you're looks like they're um, coming down. Like doing them. Yeah, they are doing them. Um, so we're making progress. We'd like to get it down so that. We so have no initially, fifty-four. Yeah. The court order when we went back March third, they they put it off till till. I'm sorry. They. I'm sorry, Bob. The judge rules. I understand. <laughs> that although it says April here. It's actually because they're in a program called Rep Payee, where um, they have court ordered people that came in and took over these this family's finances. Yeah. So they have to uh, now. It is going to take us a couple of weeks to get in. So it's probably going to be May when we get our first payment. Okay. Which number is this person? This is the very last number fifty-four. Fifty-four. Yeah. So the are you, so you're saying there's a, there's a process at which yes these people will, will be paying. Yes. Back rent so it's gonna, yes. It's going to start in May. Then. Probably well, now it's, May. Now it's May. It's May because that's mm -hmm. when the, between all of the regulatory paperwork that they needed to get done, because they, they literally they, take over. And they what become, did the court have to do with this? They put so this, basically, they put, it's put them part of the agreement. They put them in that right. program. They put them in that program because they need, and, and there are other uh, benefits. There are other uh, financial benefits for these women to get uh, financially sound. So they um, are going to be going through budget classes and everything. So, so this is something new yes. that allows you not to pay your rent. You go to class, do this, do that. No, no, I no. Think no. It's probably worse. I think probably somebody takes over your. Yeah, they, they completely. It's, 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 yeah. it's money well, good. jail. It's money jail. Good. It's finance jail. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. That's so good. So we just I mean, have to wait four weeks for when our repayment right 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 through. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like the Social Security Administration and the IRS. Well, somebody needs a rep pay program from them too. What? But okay, so. I see, you were a Roosevelt fan. Yeah. No, I wasn't. I'm talking about how they confessed they took my wife. Oh. She lived for the month of February. She died March 12th. When she got the check March 28th for February, uh, the Social Security came in and took it out mm. again. And then when I called, they said, Immediately. Oh. She, she, they said, well, she was eligible. I said, why'd you take it? Well, because we could notice of her death. Do you check and see what it's for? So now i got to reapply for them to restore it again. Mm. It's crazy. Anyway, that's right. that's that's the. And the infrastructure. Okay, part. so um, vote to. That government. <laughs> vote to accept the administration report. Yeah, a motion to accept the administrator's report. I'll make the motion. A motion by Gene. I'll second second it. by Bill. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Three zero zero. Okay. So the administrator's review will take place next. We may. When you, you will re yep. send that out I to us with it, our yep. next package. Um, Infrastructure. So um, we did put a, a written request to, for the request of the board to the alarm company to find out about our motherboard. I haven't heard back yet. Um, uh, and also with regards to the pitch in C13, they will be here tomorrow, April 25th, 2019, to fix that and finish that. So um, that will be done as well, hopefully. Um, on May 1st and 2nd, Dennis and Paul will be completing the mandatory OSHA training in Norwood at the Norwood Housing Authority through DHCB. Um, on 422, I met with Peter Sanborn, and he um, is reaching out to a, Gallant, a designer called the Gallant Company or something. I think it's Gallant. I'm sorry. I've seen that name around. Peter Teitelbaum, I mean, Peter, Peter Sanborn. Sanborn, excuse me, of the Community Economic right. Development Authority, I mean, uh, the CDBG grant, um, with regards to the first <coughs> phase of the roofs, uh, roof. reaching out to Gallant on the house doctor list to see if they want to do that. Do you know where they're from? Quincy. Okay. For some reason, I'm, I'm thinking... Not Cambridge. Um, maybe I, uh, that area. You know who they are? No, I, I yeah. think okay. of Cambridge. Yeah. Um, Why? Experience with those. 
people from Cambridge. Okay. But I want you to review their qualifications. Okay. We have Gallant. I think his name's, but I'm not quite sure. I'll get the correct spelling. From, from Peter. Yeah. And I, um, yeah, he's probably hasn't, maybe he may not have reached out to him or hasn't got a, uh, anything back from them. He's only in town on Mondays, yeah. possibly some Wednesdays, but. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so I. He was there today, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so Monday and Wednesdays, Sunday, mm -hmm. Monday and Wednesdays. So I just will go up there on Monday. Okay. Peter's group jobs bid. No, oh, they're, bid. they're not bid yet. We haven't done the design. We have, we are according to procurement. We have to have a design first. Then they'll go out to bid. <laughs> okay. We should. My idea is to take this and turn it all over to Division of Capital Asset Management. We take DHCD out of it. Okay, so I will go Still back up on procure. Monday to check huh? to see. Still have to procure it. Oh, yeah, yeah, but at least we get somebody that knows how to do it, not the other people. Okay. So I received a letter April 10th, 2019 from the Wareham Fire Department. In the system that connects um, to their system is antiquated and outdated. All of thoroughly still working. They want us to upgrade, and they've given us to uh, July 1st, 2022 to finish it. 2022? 2022. We're already working on that, aren't we? Is that no, well, I, and initially, when I when I first read the letter, I said, oh, we got this taken care of. That's it's our fire area. line. It's actually the connection to the Wareham Fire Department. It's yeah. another whole system. Oh, okay. Although I subscribe to, if it's not <laughs> broken, why fix it? They want us to upgrade before well, it becomes you know, that, broken. That's... Which is smarter, right? Yeah. But absolutely. they're not grandfathering the old one in until it's. No. Un they just want to do it change. Well, so. 2022, so they've given us somewhat of two, uh, two and a half years. Do we have any idea what sort of. Uh, they didn't tell us in is? this letter that they will come and talk to us about it, and I will definitely. That sounds read expensive. Them. It's extremely, yeah. I'm sure it's ex like everything, I'm sure it's expensive. So. But how does the fire department come and talk to you about something that's got to go out to bid or got to be costed out well, by good. somebody else? Well, it's part gonna, of it is because be they're limited because they're it's going to have to single source procurement with, or something. Yeah, it'll follow. Yeah. It's going to have to talk to their system right. flawlessly. So they have single source procurements where they would allow us to, and edict, you know, whatever it is, if there's just a limited. Because we're uh, under an edict and there's only a limited supply of these things out there. Yeah. Okay. So they've given us only an option of two, which the state, I, I would have to reach out because I, I, would, I would like to know the answer about the procurement with us. Yeah, and find out who, Do we get three who, bids on each item? They said they don't care which one, either one of those, but they will come and talk to us. So um, they would be the two, two the candidates. Would, but what about the two candidates coming here and evaluating and then telling us what they think it would cost them to do the, what is required? Oh yes, that's in the procurement. I'm talking about the two, not two candidates. The, the uh, two companies. Well, there's two type system, two okay, systems. Okay, the two okay. systems. Yeah. Yeah. The, the two, two two compatible systems. Two that, uh, yeah, he two are, he said um, the first being a UL listed or FM approved central supervising station, and the second method requires installing an AES radio box. Both so, of which are acceptable. Right. So that's so I what I mean. So what the AES mean? radio box method is the preferred means of fire alarm monitoring, as the reporting time of alarm is faster, and crucial information about the alarm will be preferred transmitted to our dispatch center, the Thorham Fire Department. Okay, but, but it may not be our preference if, if there's a big difference between the two. Preferred doesn't mean required, mandated, right? Yes. That's all. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, waste management took over Howland Disposal, um, and then they sent us a brand new contract. Our contract with waste management goes through June 30th, uh, 2020. Um, I mean, our contract with Howland, man Howland went through June 30th, 2020, and now they want us to sign us a new three-year contract. But um, I read the back of the contract, and there are three sections that pertain to pricing, and basically uh, it reads... On occasion, we will increase prices based on what we feel is legitimate, based on the you know system and blah blah blah. 
and I, I, by the end of the reading, all three sections, they can change it at will, or at whim, I call it at whim, when I spoke to them, you know. So um, after speaking to Bob, I went back to them and asked them, when they, when they merged with Howland Disposal, how they handled the contracts, because did they, you know, did they absorb the contracts and, and they just kind of fill, assume, assume them, and then, uh, or because, you know, were they just sending it, hoping that, that we would just sign this contract and move forward? Because they'll immediately raise the price and drop the level of service. Yeah. Right now, Howland goes through Redwood. They actually get out of the truck, walk to the buildings, and drag the uh, the, the, the the bins to the road, empty them, and bring them back. Um, I'm sure that that's going to go away. Republic Services doesn't do that. Our maintenance men will get them out the night before and put them, put them back uh, after they come through on Tuesday morning. So um, I know that that's probably going to change, but as far as money, I'm going to hold off and see if we can keep it going to June 2, 2020, as far as we that, can. That's my point. When a company comes in and assumes a takes over or whatever to another company, all the contracts that that other company has, we were never notified that they're all expired not not in not in effect mm -hmm. so i don't know why we shouldn't assume that they took it let them tell us that when they took them over they didn't assume the contracts if they didn't assume the contracts then we don't have to continue with them we'll go out and get somebody else or look for somebody else and one of the yeah. things i'm suggesting is we see who the town has yeah. that picks up their trash at the school buildings and the maintenance buildings and all the other public buildings in town and see if we can piggyback on that and just pay whatever they're paying because under the chapter 121 b section 7 it says that the town shall avail itself to services if we ask for it and we'll pay all the costs like we do with the sewer department we pay all the indirect direct costs Retirement costs, human health and health and welfare costs, workers' comp costs, everything is they're, they're left whole. So, the, but because they're a larger entity, entity, they probably went out and got better prices on bidding. So, if we can piggyback on that, it's no cost to the town. It's probably a benefit because they're a little bigger, a, a bigger um, entity that's now. Big bid. <laughs> yeah. So that's all I'm saying. We reach out to the the, the public works or maintenance department. Uh, like we did with the sewer. Okay, in the fuel. That's it. In the fuel. In the yeah. fuel. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, and then um, I'm sorry about. It. So that's my my concern is that they took over now they're saying all the contracts with everybody that Howland had is just null and void because we we took them over. That doesn't usually work that way, does it? Shouldn't we're talking about the trash hauling business here? I you know mean, it's tough. You mean gangsters? I didn't say gangsters. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say gangsters. Mafia. <laughs> that either. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, let me back up one step. No, yeah. Yeah, that's my that's my grandpa. My grandpa started a drug business. But he was probably he was yeah, go ahead, go ahead, back up. The fire okay. the fire alarm. The fire alarm system. Yeah, so there's this, a fire this, alarm system. They're referencing Redwood here. Is, does this also apply to the well, alarm? I can't what happened was um, when Peter, when when I first met with Peter, he had told me that he Peter went to Sanborn. Sanborn. When, I, when I met with Peter Sanborn the first time to kind of say hello, and he wanted to list again the list of the designers and you know tell mm -hmm. us the difference between you know the state and the federal, how we can handle things, which the federal government under the CDBG would not request us getting a designer; they would just move forward. But because we're state at, we're under the procurement laws, we have to go do the designer law. Um, because then that takes away the money from the project, you know, mm -hmm. especially a roof, you know. God bless you. Um, so, it, you can, uh, so he did go to, uh, you know, he did tell me that if there is money left over from the roof, they're going to start, they will help with this. Oh, with the fire law. Mm -hmm. The CDBG money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, which is good information. Yeah. Um, yeah. But didn't answer my question. But here's the bottom. Yeah. What's okay. the question? The question. Um, does the lack of communication with the fire department? The fire department. They, they're referencing Redwood. This is addressed to Redwood. Right. 
Does that also apply to Iowa law? I, um, I, when I read it, I assumed it's going to, and it may, they may be doing this in phase two. You know, they'll do, they'll okay. strap us with one in one and then in another right behind it. Mm -hmm. But eventually, because this is, a, this development is much older than that development. So I don't. So. But this has been renovated, but I assume those were not. No, no, those are not. I mean, mm -hmm. oh. not in my available knowledge. So Which why don't we, who, who wrote that letter to us? It's uh, uh, Matthew, Matthew Rowley, Rowley, the so fire why, chief. Why don't we write a little brief letter to Mr. Rowley, the fire chief, and say, does this, will it, and how apply to both right. properties? And then we'll know. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah, Rather than the, the guess. And if, we're, if we have to buy, buy it, might as well buy two. Right. Get it done. 104 units. So we'll we'll find out. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. Put it off. It will cost more in two years. Okay. Yeah. Can we put in for CPC money for that? <laughs> yes, we can. Sorry. Yes, you can. Absolutely can. Under the new CPC laws, we absolutely can. The ones that DHCD wrote for them from the local housing authorities, so they could actually pick from another pocket money to help with the re renovations. Mm -hmm. So because they are not building any more units, they want to sustain the ones they have. Yeah, so let's let's pursue number one, does it cover both? And number two, apply for when we get the amount, we can say it's too costly for us to handle by operating costs, our extraordinary repairs. It's 20, 30, 40,000, I don't know. So we need some CPC funding. Okay. You know? And then the deferred maintenance list, we're still working on that. Um, Rugs and we are covering for red with finish paint. We're out and we're getting there with the painting. Um, this we're almost finished with the CO2 and the combined 10 year units. Uh, building two, we need to we're working on that this summer. The drainage to do a French drain, um, out in front because of the uh, that, that will simply be CO. I know, I you know, thank you for reminding me again. Let's say that again. It's not CO2, it's CO. And I do CO2 like it's carbon, you know, like it's carbon, carbon monoxide, dioxide, monoxide, not, not, not dioxide. monoxide. I mean, yeah. Yes. Um, Is either of them good for me? What? Is either of them good for me? Um, I wouldn't. I'll feed the one of them. <laughs> Believe it or not, my son is a soil scientist, and one does really good in the soil, and one does not good in the air. It's very interesting. It actually cleans the soil. It's amazing. That, that would be carbon dioxide. Exactly. Thank you. Which is expelled by industry and people yeah. and cow farts and stuff. I, 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 uh, I did uh, put this letter uh, December 21st. I could not find that if I gave you. This is the official letter they give us when they give us our bond money. I remember seeing FY22. It's just every year we get this after a capital infrastructure plan before our capital infrastructure plan. So I kind of thought that I gave it to you, but I couldn't find it. I think it I remember seeing it in the package yeah. before, so because it's, it's just FY22, we're going to get 159.043. But remember, we had five years, and we have the different... Um, so we kind of combine the money, and we use it according to what um, what plan we have in place at the time. These are the, you know, we're going to do the windows and redwood over a period of phases. We're going to do two buildings at a time. Mm -hmm. And then same like the roofs here. Now when we go over there, the roofs will be completed. When we get in five years, part of this money will be used to replace some windows in A and B building over there. And we will just do on a rolling basis. And, and, and the, the, alarm, the fire alarm system at Redwood is in our plan. And so is in roofs. So if we, I mean... Because we put in the plan before we got knowledge that the actual uh, grant has been submitted, so we will we will reallocate that money to more windows or this. I'd really like to get some of the sewer lines replaced over there. Mm -hmm. It's it's it needs to the ones that are our responsibility, the ones that, are, that connect the buildings to the sewer pump house. Mm -hmm. Once it reaches the pump house, the sewer lines that becomes the town's responsibility somewhat. I, 
you know, I, I don't know. Are we, are we having problems with the looting? Well, there we're not. We're having problems because there's there were asbestos piping. So fifty plus years. There is some when we send the camera down. Mm -hmm. Some of them have roots. We we do the treatments. We're doing the blow treatments that help with the roots. But grease, baby wipes. This is a huge problem in our town wide. It, it really, we have a problem with baby wipes. In our, we have a problem our, with baby wipes, Mr. Lockwood. Because they don't. They're not biodegradable. And when they lift that cover and you see it, they're as white as white. Really? Yes, it's amazing. I'm like, I can be white and all that so, stuff. On the package, I thought they say septic tanks suitable and all this other but, stuff. Yeah, they, they do, but it isn't. Huh? But it isn't. They're not. No, they're not. They because because what happens is they've got these nylon things in it, and it just covers the pipe, and it causes blockage. And and then the other really big thing, which is amazing, I, I'm beginning to understand, is the grease. People, I mean, when I mm. talk grease, it sticks to the... To the lining of the pipe it becomes the best friend and it becomes this gray black sludge and it just builds up and we're 50 plus years what kind of grease is this every single grease that you can imagine the uh, grease butter that grease, grease, grease that you put a little olive oil with? on your in your that's pan and you're grease. frying up some potatoes that and veggies into grease? that's grease that's grease and you clean you in the in the uh in the grease. septic system you clean it in the sink it goes down and after 55 plus years, you got some Portuguese ladies cooking some great food. Well, let's not get I know, uh, suck it up. racist here. I'm sorry. But they have great food, and you smell, you walk by the house, and I'm like, oh no, dear Miss News, please don't throw it down the sink. But they do, because that's what they did. My and pipes are over 50 years old, and they're not clogged. And I eat that stuff. Um, the grease yeah, so that, that's, that's a different type of pipes. Years old. Uh, okay. So we have, I have so a digestive system. We should maybe from each individual unit. Does it all collect in the one place? Yeah, each building has a central pipe that goes out and meets with a bigger pipe, and yeah. In my other life, plumbers, at least in Connecticut, had some sort of a specific requirement to insert some sort of a to trap that trap trap catch it. So okay. I, I, if we're a larger we, we unit like this, I don't know whether something like that would That's work. That's when they had real grease. Now this is artificial this is grease. Maybe 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Uh, well, they, no. in the in restaurants, you were yeah, required restaurant. to put in a grease trap. The grease trap, trap right. yeah. Uh, we're, we're not... But we're not restaurants. Yeah, That's we're not a restaurant. to put them in there. Uh, but it's it not just, we couldn't insert right. such as... We did have one money. failure through four years ago. One complete failure. It just continually backs right back up into the building. But that's not a grease problem. Well, it was it was that's a combination of grease and roots and and just actual asbestos stuff that piping put in. just decaying. Mm -hmm. You know, in certain areas, it just doesn't doesn't last. And mm -hmm. um, so that is something that we have to be aware of that eventually we're gonna okay. we're gonna down the road. But I know we have roofs. I know we, the roofs are the most important thing right now. The fire alarm is the most important thing. You know, so those in our sewer pipes, but windows too. So it's always a check and balance, you know. So, okay. And that's it for the okay. infrastructure report. That's it. Yeah. Motion on the infrastructure report. Um, motion is out. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Three zero zero. Okay. Quarterly budget for the. For the uh, nine months ending March 31st, is this what we had to discuss with, with the accountant who was here? No, this is this one is, that I just did. This is I the did actual. these. These are actual numbers. If anybody's asked a question on the numbers, so we have the the annual budget, and then we have the current. Yeah. I think that would wouldn't that be nine months? March. It is nine. Oh, I'm sorry. Nine You're right. Months. I didn't change it. It's nine months. Nine months. So after nine months, it looks like we have hundred thousand. We're not bad. We have a an in, net income of three thousand dollars, and that's oh. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's only if we if we got our thirty nine yeah. sixty eight. Okay. 
so, we would have a net profit of thirty one. Yeah, so that's what that, that's incorporated in the subsidy yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. So we need that. that we happen. need okay, our subsidy. So that's why we yeah. need to do the letter. Yeah. We'll, uh, so the only number that I, the only this this um, between insurance and in the employee benefits is that. We, we are a little bit above 988 and that's because we switched insurances and a couple of them went up and we have a new company to do the uh, liability insurance that went up ten dollars a unit so that cost us a little bit so those are the numbers that's why it's a little bit higher since we did the budget yeah since we've done the budget so that's but our work it. As, and then our work as comp is going to go down right? it will go down but we have to get that one year under the belts yeah okay um but I mean, and then, you know, obviously our water and sewer had a heat, had both had in increases this year, so that's why that that negative fourteen thousand is the, you know, it's above. He only had eighty thousand, which that's the constant number for the last couple of years. But I knew, you know, he wasn't aware that water and sewer both increased this year. So um, that's you know that that really mo most of it a couple you know, two or three thousand is just. You know, we had a couple of leaks and things like that. So, hmm. and then electricity is up from last year. Okay, but, but gas is down. Gas is way down. Why is that? Well, I think. Um, well, first of all, we have um, the new roofs at Agawam. New okay. windows mm -hmm. really made a huge difference. I mean, it's like we're we're getting. I mean, maybe. You know, between direct energy and national grid, one month in the winter time, I think we only paid like two thousand dollars for heat for this whole complex. Wow, yeah. which is really good. But that's because the extra insulation in the so roofs. So that's paying off. It really was paying off, and mm -hmm. and um, you know we do. I mean, the electric rates did go up. You know, so even the housing authority rates that we do receive, it did go up anyways, and you know. Okay, so and then and then this summer too, you know the construction they that that was a real drain on our electricity. Now I don't know if it's just because of the type of equipment they used. I didn't really pay attention with Verica when they were here, but it was about almost four to five thousand dollars in the two three months this past summer difference for electricity mm -hmm. because we had all those machines all day long. You know the all the electrical stuff that they had plugged in and all of the ACs. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's it. So, it, so the extraordinary maintenance line item, you see how it came down from yeah, the month before? Right, yeah. It's only that much or under, which, you know, I know it's a lot, but I, I honestly, you know, because we did allocate the uh, CPC money and 4900 to replace to replace some of the boiler problems that we had over the winter, the beginning of the winter in A building and, and in G building over in Redwood, and then... Um, yeah, that that's it. So, and the rest, the rest is stoves and fridges that we had to buy. We did have to replace uh, a very um, the handicapped units. Those stoves are very expensive. So I mean, they're just we did have to replace one that we weren't expecting this year. And that's it. That's okay. Thank you. So on the on on the labor rates, do you know oh, how okay. much? Oh, okay. So I'm sorry. No, this oh. is, how much did they, they were like a dollar forty six. They went up a dollar forty eight for the uh, yeah, maintenance nice. mechanics. These oh, two, yeah. It, it was a big amount. Over this, last year. Yeah, over last automatic. year. Automatic. I mean, no. the year before it was twenty six cents difference. This year was a dollar forty six. Oh. Hmm. An hour. Yeah. You know, it's out of our control. Okay. All right. So well, that's good. Any other business to We do with? have some, you know, just so you know, you can see, we do have a little, see this, this particular number, maintenance labor, that 10807 is what we're under for the budget, mm -hmm. continuing the actual. Well, last year, we had Steve, and we had hired Dennis, Pre previous to 2000, well, we FY19, we had hired an extra, somebody to mow our lawns. Well, mm -hmm. Steve was... Oh, kind of gone, gone yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's why it got pumped up and now this year it's it balanced it'll, it'll out go down. yeah all right so 
Okay, so that being the And we did get, we, are, we have about $2,700 more than what we did. Anyway, over, so you saw the, the two letters that go into the state in response to their letter about, did you read those? St those Sidley and um, Jen. 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 Jen and yes, Stately. Are those all right? Okay. So we, we, we can, we, when Donna comes back, we'll all sign them and get them off. So if they call, see if you're waiting for the other board member. Yeah. And, uh, I know we have to end the meeting. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, Gene wanted to comment that on oh, okay, the, other ahead. business on the town meeting. <clears throat> I'll just make a comment and ask that you think about it. Maybe we can talk about it over the month. Um, unfortunately, we weren't there last night, but I was watching the town meeting, and there was um, Sandy Slavin had this Article 23, and she did a good job of presenting it, but she did use the Wareham Housing Authority as an example of what happens of the system getting plugged without the seat, and she was recommending that the CPC, once approved the articles, they could move directly to the town warrant. There was a lot of back and forth, a lot of support, mostly. Um, and at the end of the, the night, uh, uh, it was 35 to 29. So in because the need to require a two-thirds vote. In favor of her motion. In favor, yes. Right. However, somewhere in that five or ten minutes, one of the selectmen, Mr. Teitelbaum, made some comments about the Wareham Housing Authority. Now, I interpreted it one way, and I thought I heard a word, and then I, I was, Jackie couldn't believe me, so... I started to try to get some answers from others. And somebody else said they were there. And it, what it really, she, her interpretation was, we, what he said is the Wareham Housing Authority could not limit access to housing, housing favoring Wareham residents and scolded the CPC for uh, signing citizens' petitions. Yeah, but we said, I heard it a little bit differently, but I, I thought it was... But in point of fact, when I presented the thing and I wanted the language in, it said, to the extent allowable by yeah. law. But, but so this was just... I, 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 it's not the question of what was in the seat in our... Um, yeah. I, I just didn't... I was offended that the comment was insinuating that we hadn't done a good job or were we doing yeah. something that was incorrect. Well, and so therefore, what you have is people in the audience, people out of the TV land, and you have yep. the finance committee listening to this constantly. Yeah. So I I'm, I'm, I just wanted wondered if we should at least ask if we can, I'm going to see when the tape uh, goes on. I'll ask Bob afterwards for the town meeting. I assume they show it on TV. Or maybe I can yeah. get it. Can I, am I able to get just a piece of, I can tell them when it was? I mean, maybe I just am too sensitive, but, but it was offensive to me. Well, I, apparently, it was not the only offensive comment. Last no, time. it wasn't. Because mm -hmm. others saw fit to comment. I, under, it, I understand, although I did not witness it myself. Oh, I, I, I don't... I, there were definitely times that there were offensive I, comments, but this one just stood out to me. And what it bothers me is we're working very hard. People who don't really understand how the Wareham Housing Authority works and how difficult difficult it is to stay within a budget. And I don't know whether they just think we have bags of money somewhere. And to indicate that we're not doing the job properly or incorrectly is is offensive. When right. And I just think we should send a letter and say, it's, it's, this it's, is the way it should be, and this is what we're intending to do, it's, and we're doing it to the best of our ability. It's offensive, but it's also inaccurate. So yes, I guess that's what we're the, We want to correct the record, and that's why when I presented this long mm -hmm. article, I spelled everything out so it was clear. And then we were told, oh, take that all out. It's not necessary. You just need two sentences. So now you leave all that out so people are left to their own... Um, understanding of what it means instead of in interpreting rather than li listen to or reading what it said. So I would be glad to take that and resurrect it and give it to the media and have them print it as a response to any doubts, questions, or whatever that were um, 
um, indicated at town meeting, and he needs to send it to the FinCom too. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I know that um, you spoke with attorney uh, oh, Catherine yeah. O'Donnell, Kathleen O'Donnell. Yeah, yeah. The, now the, 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 she, you explained to her what we were doing, exactly, yeah, and yeah. she understood that that was correct. Right. And we, and she, and based on that, we went to the CPC, presented the argument, and the second time they modified the uh, to say to the extent allowed by law. Which is what Kathleen recommended. Right, and that's what was going to be in there. But they took all of that out, so now nobody knows that what it's in, that was in or out, or how it's going to be. So technically, if you took the article as pre presented, now we're going to go back and implement it the way we want to comply with the original intent. And that's why I wanted it passed at town meeting in that so it has the effect of town meeting vote is the local law. I as understand opposed to that. Now we're going back and forth and arguing over, well, it didn't mean this, no. it didn't mean that, you can't do this, you can't do that. So now you're, you're you back into this. That. Huh? You did say he to said the extent. Right, but yeah, it's I did say it's yeah, not I did. article. I did say it when I spoke, but He's I won't. Like, you don't take it. was part of the presentation. Yeah, yeah but, but I wanted it on the record, in the document. The so here it is. Anybody back. comes in and challenges what we're doing when we do the lease, they say, here's the vote of town meeting. That's the effect of law. End of story. That's what we're doing. Now it's like we're doing it, and well, well, people say, well, that isn't what we understood. And now we, you go to court to interpret what was meant and all that stuff. That's why when I write something, it's clear, it's precise, and I'll say it three times, three different ways. So there's no under, misunderstanding about what it means. But so we'll, we'll I, I agree with you. I think there's as much misunderstanding as people would like to, to like to be. Yeah, I'm, you, I'm all in favor of. The acronym KISS. <laughs> yeah, in other words, they, uh, just to make a... Because make, it wouldn't matter. Yeah, even if you write it. That's my, right. my opinion. Yeah, they'll like It really right. wouldn't matter if we wrote 14 paragraphs. Right. 13 and a half of them would be wrong. And they'll say, but. We, yes. But, 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 but. But you didn't write 15. Yeah, so, yeah. And, and what the real problem is, it's being, it's misinformation. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know whether just to, even at some point, we need to really articulate it simplicity. No, not it, for. I don't think. Yeah. I'm not talking now about the selectmen. I'm talking about the the townspeople or even the finance committee. We're doing this so we can provide housing for our own residents. Right. Qualified, it's eligible, qualified at, and we have set this people. aside. We're within. Just. I, I, what just, I don't understand is his the argument that he continually makes, Mr. Teitelbaum himself about having all of these other people come into our town uh, you know i'm like this we, we're there i mean you, you're not going to have any control over that vis-a-vis yeah. -vis the new section 8 and the new champ rules you're not going to have control you do have control over this allowed by, by law i go so back i, I to really the... don't get it i don't get his argument i don't get he doesn't tell us why it's illegal he only just purports yeah. it out there, and I, I need a little bit more information. Well, understand. everything I've heard and what I've listened to about the law from, I think, someone who understands it, I don't think they understand it. I don't think they understand it. They think that we can just but call up like, DHCD it's, and it's like what Bill still says. rain money to it's us. It's like what Bill, exactly says. what Bill says. They don't understand because they don't they want, want to understand, understand, so they present a different point of yeah. view. But my, I go back to the beginning of time. Gen <laughs> the genesis of this law was there's 351 cities and towns. All were al under the statute are allowed to go to town meeting and create a local housing authority. 240 of them did so. And the statute said that they have determined there's a need for affordable housing in their town. Yep, so we did. we did it, and it was, it was implied and it was clear then that it was for local residents. In those towns that didn't, didn't choose to opt for it. So those towns that didn't can't then send somebody from New Bedford or Mattapoise or Marion or some town of Sandwich that doesn't have one and say, oh, we're jumping your list because we don't have a housing authority. But can they do it with CHAMP now? No. Okay. Well, they can do it, 
but they wait in line. Okay. okay. Yeah. But I mean, no, they can't do it. it. Emergency case status will trump now anything. The whole That's, thing is counterintuitive, is what I'm trying to say. It just, it, it, but then they they changed the law. They merged 200, which was for veterans. 667 was for elderly. They were clear, separate, and distinct. They merged them all under 400 or 4,000. So they're all dis disabled, elderly, senior, yeah. veterans. They're all under this big umbrella of housing here, even though they were built for seniors and there's no room for families in here. There are housing authorities, quote, and I can tell well, right. Holbrook, where they had an elderly complex, but they had additional land. They wanted to put more elderly, so DACD said, no, but we'll give you money. So they, they've got 10 or 20 units of family housing at a complex that's all brick for elderly, and it ain't working out too good. Doesn't work. It's tough. So, anyway. Well, so, let me see if I can just um, I hear what get saying, a little more information and, and then I, decide whether... Maybe maybe this is over for the time being. Maybe not. Well, this is on TV. It, and I'll, and I'll but that glad. that's the whole thing. It's the broader issue that it's misinformation yeah. to a lot of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'd be I'd be glad to clarify that. But and even like with the CPC, mm -hmm. apparently have been described as being not smart enough to understand. That's right. Even, even I can't with, volunteer for the charity. Even people. with the CPC, article, <laughs> Gene. No, not smart enough, we're saying. Even with the CPC article, Gene. I didn't. No. It doesn't, it really, you can have all these opinions, quote, expert, but there's somebody else that's going to say, well, I'm the authority on this. But I'm, the, the point I was making, everybody's making the, the uh, accusations or statements, and we're not, and that's what bothers me. I'll so, make it, well, I'll so, do and I, does it matter? I, maybe maybe we it, just bought a hide under a rock. I've made it every time right the know. opportunity well, presented itself. The thing about wrestling with the pig in the mud is the pig likes it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, anyway, I've made I it. I will follow up and try I've made to get it the exact every opportunity, statement. But I, I think it put it in the newspaper and then they'll still blog on it. You know, I don't yeah. care. We'll tell no, them. Those fellows, the fellows this is what people doing. that blog, they're quite we're, interesting. This is what we're doing. This is why we're doing yeah. it. This is the authority we have to do it. So, yeah. end the story. Anyway. Okay. I hear so, what that's you're all. I just you wanted to. to, you, need to you. you need to sign this, Gene, too. The, the, the three oh, signatures for the law. Anyway. So, I hear oh, you. Oh, good. I gave you back the thing to make my little notes on that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Is that it? So, so we have a motion to adjourn, so we'll so much. So I'll sign that. Second. Do you have an original? So that's okay.